our party has finally made their way to Bazozan. And today we're going to prep for the city. So let's dive in. All right, welcome back everyone. So I want to show you a little bit of what I do to kind of prep for the entire chapter. So before I start everything, I'll read through the entire book and just kind of skim and make sure that I have an understanding of the story itself. And then as I get to the different chapters, I read the chapter pretty in detail, take notes, and make sure I understand the transitions into the next chapter. So I've done that for chapter three, and I'll show you where that's at in my Notion notebook. And I'll have a link for this in the description below if you're interested. So I have campaign outline, and then down at the bottom here, I have a quick glance. I've just got chapter three here, but I kind of wanted to go over this before we dive into our prep for the next session, because this was a major part of it for me. Chapter three, the party's expected to go from levels five to level seven. I've got a section here on changes that I'm going to make from the book itself. So the first one is I'm going to make sure that my party cannot access Betrayer's Rise without permission from Varen Thales. And I think they're going to have to have written permission. They need to prove themselves because Betrayer's Rise is such a dangerous place. So we're going to have them run a few quests and different things inside the city of Bazozan so that it's not just run straight to Betrayer's Rise and skip the entire city of Bazozan. I'm also adding an extra encounter to help justify the level up between... So my party just hit level 5 as they entered Bazozan or saw Bazozan. And then when you go to Betrayer's Rise and let the Gloomstalkers out, you hit level 7. Level 6? Level 6. You hit level 6. So I'm going to add a, a pretty decent sized encounter that I got straight from Reddit. Uh, it's the High Thanos Estate, and I will have links for that in the description as well, the Reddit post where I copy that. I've changed a few things just to fit my party. And then the other thing I'm going to add is that Fogholm, because they're at the Ruined Temple of Evandra, Fogholm is going to be able to tell them a little bit about Evandra so that they can learn a little bit more if they want. So goals, these are the goals that my party has going into the chapter. Right now they're hoping to learn more about Evandra the Changebringer from the Vision, Sihanine the Moonweaver, and Elixian himself. The reason really they came to Bazozan was to learn those three things. And then my goal is to drive the party, give them a reason to find the prayer site in Betrayer's Rise. And there are a couple of different ways that we're going to try and do that. We'll maybe go into that a little bit more. So quests, these are quests that are from the book. Kind of just listed these and where the locations are to find these quests. My party probably won't do them all, but here's where they are just so that I have a quick reference guide for myself. So the first of those quests is to help Raynard and Sebastian Allerton dispose of the bodies, and this is at the crematorium, and then I've got, in a different location, learn more about Elixian from Bothar Dur, and deliver Naven's carved rabbit to the wall of the Unforgotten, and these are in the infirmary. Then I've got the shooting match, sparring match, and wrestling match in the Aurora Watch back barracks. My party can also learn more about Avondra the Changebreaker from Fogholm the Gardener, and that's that the, the temple. Learn more about the Jewel of Three Prayers from Question. Search for Question's Missing Expedition in Betrayer's Rise. Find the prayer site in Betrayer's Rise for Aloysia. And then learn more about Elixian from Aloysia. And these are all in the Ready Room, as well as clear out the High Thanos Estate. And then the last is be enter Betrayer's Rise and find the prayer site. So these are the quests that are kind of outlined. This is all before Betrayer's Rise itself. So my plan is is to feed information to my party through NPCs to help guide them to go find quests if they're having a hard time. If they do them naturally, that's great. And then we'll kind of go about the city for a little while and then let them into Betrayer's Rise. So NPCs worth noting from the book, we've got Varen Thales, who's the leader of the Auroran Watch, Prolix Yusuf, who is an archaeologist from the Allegiance of Allsight. We've got Bothar Dur, who's the priestess that knows a little bit about Elixian. There's Fogholm the Gardener, who's a priest of Melora and can tell them about Avandra. He's at the temple. We have Question, who's the monastery Dick, operative of the Cobalt Soul, and can provide the party with information about the Jewel of Three Prayers. Aloysia Telfen is the occult initiate who wants to help, who wants help finding a prayer site inside of Betrayer's Rise, and also knows quite a bit about Elixian. So these are just some of the general NPCs. We'll fill out more as they go throughout the city. The secrets and clues. So these are just things that I, as I was reading, I was like, hey, that's a good thing. Probably we should tell the party about. I'm not going to read through all of these, but they're here. There are some about Elixian, and in parentheses here, I've got who the information is likely to come from. That doesn't mean it has to. It's just someone that I, the book recommends. And we can change that to a different NPC if we want. And then a transition. I need to get the PCs from here to Ankarel. And I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but I've got time because I expect this to take a couple sessions here in Bazozan. So that is the general overview of the Bazozan chapter itself. I haven't dived into the Betrayer's Rise yet because I want my players to at least have one session, uh, one full session. I expect maybe a couple in Bazozan before we're going into Betrayer's Rise. And then I'll do the same thing I did here for Betrayer's Rise. Let's go ahead and dive into our actual session prep now. 
our characters, we've got Chosen, our bugbear barbarian, Dimitri, our gnome fighter, Iris, our halfling warlock, we've got Jimmy, the sea elf druid, and Melvin, our half elf bard. Our strong start. As my party enters through the dark gates of Bazozan, they're going to notice the five gibbering mouthers down the street, and we're going to go straight into combat. So Kent and his ally are going to tell the party, please go help with this. We're going to go get Varen Thales for help. We'll be back. So I'm going to go straight into combat, have them roll initiative, and they will have some help from some of the guards and soldiers there. We'll just kind of see how that goes. And then depending on how well the party's doing is when Varen and the others will come back. Maybe after, maybe not. We'll see. Scenes, I've just got the locations here listed from the map of Bazozan. So we've got the gate, we've got the crematorium, the infirmary, the barracks, the dilapidated temple, we've got the wall of the unforgotten, the ready room, and then the Hythenos estate. And I really want this part to be sandboxy for my party. So I'm going to have them interact with Varen Thales, and he, if they have questions, he will answer them and give them things to the best of their knowledge. But if they have a specific question about, like, Avandra, he's going to point them in the direction of Fogholm. So he won't have all of the answers, but he will be able to point the party to someone in the city who does, because as the leader of Bazozan, I feel like he should have a decent handle on what's going on here. He's also going to be very specific in the fact of asking the party to go help at the Hythenos estate. He's going to have them go and meet up with... Ereldra Hythenos and help her with her father's estate. The, the next location is a crematorium. They've got the infirmary. We've got Gatehold Barracks. We've got the Dilapidated Temple, the Wall of the Unforgotten, the Ready Room, which is where a whole bunch of the NPCs are, and then we've got the Hythenos estate. So secrets and clues, we talked about these already. I'm not going to go through each of them again. They're here on my uh, Notion page if you'd like to look at them. But the big one here is that no one's allowed to enter the Betrayer's Rise without the permission of Varen Thales. And then as my party has more questions or they're having a lack of knowing what to do next, I'm going to insert these through NPCs. And I've got them again in parentheses for suggestions of who could say what. Our NPCs, we just talked about those a second ago. The only addition here is the Ereldra, is Ereldra Hythenos, who is the daughter of the famed explorer researcher who needs help clearing out her father's home. So at this point, I think it's probably a good idea to go over the Hythenos estate encounter. So I've got a link here to another page. And this is from Cat Valkyrie on Reddit. And I've got links for that and I'll provide them in the description below. So that comes with this really cool map. It's a, just a Google, I think it's Google Docs they use. So we've got maps with the DM and player versions. And then there's a whole write up on what is there, uh, who they can encounter. But basically what has happened is Tenerin Hythenos is a reclusive scholar in Bazozan. He's, he was part of the expedition that actually accidentally opened the rift in Bazozan. And ever since then, he's been trying to figure out how to close the rift. So he's got all kinds of different crazy artifacts that are cursed inside his home. He sent his daughter out on a quest. She came back. And when she came back, she was attacked at her father's home. And she's not an adventurer. She's more into the studying of things. So she's not equipped to battle very well. She comes back, gets attacked, and is looking now for help from Varen Thales and the Aurora Watch. So there's a bunch of different locations here. It's really well thought out. There's some lore. There's uh, some fun things, the rug of smothering. I added a mimic in later on. But the big bad guy here is a... Let's scroll down. A Dybek, who is inhabiting Tenerin Hythenus. And we will... Play that out. I think it should be a lot of fun. It should be pretty challenging for my party. It's also kind of fun. Spooky-ish haunted house type thing. We're getting close to Halloween here. So I think it'll play out pretty well. The other fun thing with this is there's a lot of different cursed items that have been included. So let's see. There's like He's got a display room with a bunch of cursed items. So it could be fun for my party to touch and try and figure out what's going on there. I will have Ereldra tell my party, be careful what you touch so that I don't just go in and get like cursed with all these different items. But once they're done with this and they clear it all out, they'll come back and she will hand them as a reward of the Moonweaver's Vengeance, which is a twist on one of the vestiges of Divergence. It ties in a little bit better with the Call of the Netherdeep in the fact that it's a Moonweaver's sword. So as her thanks to them, she's not real good with a sword. She's going to give that to them in hopes that they will be able to unlock more of its power as well as continue on in her father's research. So she's also going to let them know that there's a prayer site inside of Betrayer's Rise. Her father was studying and believes that it's there. If they can prove that, that will be enough of a reward for her and her father's memory. So that's the whole gist of the quest. There's a whole bunch of more information on that. I highly recommend you use this if you're in Bazozan. Let's go back to our monster stat block. So monsters that we should be prepared for. Uh, we've got the Gibbering Mouthers. We've got the Auroran Watch Guard and Soldiers. These are just there to help the party as needed with the Gibbering Mouthers. And then we've got Varen Thales if we actually need him. 
Then there's the Rug of Smothering. These are from the Hythenos Estate. Stone Defenders, um, Veterans, and which can be possessed. We've got a Mimic, just for fun. And then the Dybuk itself. Treasure! There's a whole bunch of different things. Uh, a Necklace of Breath, Wand of Verging Missiles, Goggles of Gloom, Whip of the Serpent's Fang, Dust of Sneezing and Coughing, Cursed Lax, Luckstone, Staff of the Decay, and then these are all cursed items, pretty much. They don't quite work the way you're hoping. And then we've got the Periaptive Help, some Potions of Healing, a Spell Scroll of Comprehend Languages, and then the Moonweaver's Vengeance, which I've got a link for. You can check that out. It's got a picture of it, and then what it does in each of its various states, if you're interested. Things to create. I've got item descriptions for all of the magic items listed up above here that you can print out and hand to your players. So I'll have a link for that in the, the description below, as well as a link to this cardstock minis for the various encounters that are possible through chapter three. So that's pretty much it. Quite a bit to go over today. I do appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you in the next one.